Welcome everybody to the Automator Plus channel. And today we're gonna be chatting about debugging in VS Code, debugging your extend script, debugging your bugs. Horrible. <laughs> debugging your bugs. <laughs> your life. <laughs> debugging your hair. Yeah, okay, cool. Welcome to the Automator Plus channel, everybody. And today we're gonna be chatting about bugs, how to get them, how to create them, and how to debug them. All right, so welcome everybody. Today we're gonna to be looking at bugs. We're gonna create a bug in extend script. Uh, we're gonna see that it doesn't work, uh, that our code is buggy. Uh, then we're gonna spin up the debugger, uh, try and get to, to the bottom of our bug, find it, and then squash it. So bugs, bugs are very normal, uh, and usually squashing bugs, uh, if you do it in a maintainable, sustainable fashion, will make sure that your code in future um, is much more sustainable and robust. Cool, so let's jump here into VS Code. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open a folder. Uh, so you always wanna do this uh, when working with VS Code, uh, make sure that you have got a folder open as a workspace, right? So here I'm going uh, tutorial three and I'm just opening that. And you'll know you're in the right place when you see this little tutorial three uh, drop down within the Explorer. So that's saying that this folder has been opened by VS Code and all of the nice uh, features that come with that are available to us. All right, so I'm just going ahead, create a new file, and I'm gonna call this bug, bug.jsx. Great stuff, great stuff. I'm going to create our launch.json file. If you don't know what's going on with this guy, check out our video on that. Yeah. Boom. And I'm just gonna go and say, hey, we wanna execute this bug.jsx. And we got our bug over here. Okay, so our bug.jsx, let's see if we can run this. Uh, we're gonna get our error saying we don't have an active target. So that's a little yellow select target here at the bottom. I'm gonna head over to Premiere Pro 19. So that's what I've got currently open. Run our bug script. And awesomeness running from top to bottom. So how do I know that? Ah, no errors, right? So our code currently isn't really doing anything. So let's just maybe see and get some response here. So chatted a bit, a bit about it uh, in the previous video, but in JavaScript, standard JavaScript, we've got the console.log function. Although because we're in extend script world now, um, enable for us to enable us to print things out into the VS code debugging console, um, we're gonna have to use this dollar sign dot write function, right? Uh, I'm just going here and type in hello world just to make sure that our code is running. I run that and boom, that's what I wanna see. So our debug console, so obviously our code is executing. We are connected to Premiere Pro and life is good. Cool. So we're in our bug.jsx file and I'm gonna introduce some bugs. So first I'm gonna go and declare a variable A and I'm gonna give it the value of two. And I'm gonna go and declare a variable B and declare a value of three. So again, variables, name them what you like. A and B usually horrible names, uh, but for our example, they will they will suffice. And what I want to illustrate here, if we say C equals A plus B, what do you think the value of C is gonna be? Drop them in the comments. Lol. Um, two and three. Right, so we're here um, and we are printing out our value of C. And we expect this to be five. I mean, three plus two equals five, surely. But lo and behold, we get 23. Right, so let's get to the bottom of this. Uh, so the reason is the type mismatching, right? So we've got strings and we're adding numbers. So how can we check the, the types of our variables in extend script, in JavaScript? Uh, we use this type of function. And over here, I'm just gonna use this right line uh, instead of the standard just right. Um, so the right line is just gonna add a little enter at the end of our whatever we're printing out. So it's actually writing the, the line. So if I print out the types of A and B here, uh, you'll see that one is a string, the other is a number, right? As we expected, as we declared. Right, so a simple way for us to just take into account uh, what types our variables are um, is just to do a little symbol if check. So we can do a if 
the type of a equals a number and we would like and the type of b to equal a number. But if both these conditions are met, then we're happy to say that yes, c does indeed equal a plus b. However, if that's not the case, we'd rather want c to just be equal to the text error. Right, if we give this a run, we'll see that we're getting an error, obviously because our types are mismatched. But if we correct our value of two there, we're gonna get our five printed out. Okay, so this is a quick and easy way for us to sort of counter one edge case of our um, situation. Uh, but there might be times where you expect it to um, and you might convert it back to a, an integer. So these things are also possible. But what I wanna to touch on here next is just how you can use this VS Code debugger to actually get to the bottom of these issues, right? So the first thing I want to introduce is the idea of a breakpoint, right? So if you see, if you hover here in the gutter of VS Code, there's a little red dot that appears. And this is a very powerful red dot. You can actually go and click there in VS Code and you'll see the dim red dot becomes a big red dot. Um, and here in our little breakpoints panel, so I'm here in the debug tab uh, within VS Code. So within the breakpoints, we see the line numbers that these breakpoints have been enabled for, and we see all of them are checked. So we can actually activate them from here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and just hit this little run. Um, and for some reason, I'm getting this error. Cannot find debug adapter for, for type extend script and wants me to open this launch.json. So this does sometimes happen with VS Code. Um, and that is usually if you've kicked off more than one connection to your host. So we got into Premiere Pro from VS Code one way and now we try it again and some of those connectors are just clashing. So best advice to do there, close it all down and just start it up again. I'm just gonna go ahead and close VS Code, open it up again. Luckily, it remembers I was in that uh, tutorial three. By the way, if you didn't know, your launch.json, your launch.json sits in that little .vs code folder. Um, and if we just go to our debug tab again, hit run, we obviously have to select our target application again. Go ahead and do that, hit our debug run. And boom, we got there. And as you can see, our application stopped at this first breakpoint. So now if we unravel this little left pane, um, this is where our magic's gonna come in. So here we can evaluate the value of each variable as we step through our application. So we can see that we've got a variable here, a, that is equal to two. We can see we've got B and C. So we see here we've got a lot of other things here as well. Uh, we've got the app variable here. We've got a clip variable here. I mean, depending on what you run within your session um, is gonna, gonna govern what you, you've got in here. I see I've got an I equals six. Um, that's actually from a, a previous session that I, that I still ran. Uh, so all, everything, all the variables that is currently in your session, in memory, in your Adobe application will be shown here. Okay, so what's cool about that is that we can actually then use this little pane here at the top to step through our code. So continue will actually just go to the next breakpoint. So as you can see, I've hit continue there. Um, if I go here, now I'm printing out my things, right? So these two lines executed over there. And this is now my next one uh, where I'm checking my, my if conditions. So if I continue through there, my program has now run from top to bottom and executed everything. Great stuff. Okay, so this is all well and nice, uh, but this is for standard variables, numbers, integers, strings, you know, not really the good stuff. We wanna get to the Premiere Pro stuff. Right, so I'm here on the Premiere Pro API documentation. Um, and as I've mentioned before, the documentation isn't always 100% complete. Um, so there are a few things that are missing. And with the debugger, uh, it enables you to actually look into what Premiere Pro is seeing and you'll find that you actually discover a lot many more uh, attributes and methods of the objects within Premiere Pro by using the debugger and actually going and looking around in there and seeing what is available. Right, so we're gonna stick with our uh, theme on this, uh, these longer videos about chatting um, and create our video track muter extend script capability. Um, we're keeping the, the functionality within Premiere Pro uh, the same to sort of highlight the different methods and, and concepts that we want to show you guys. Um, 
So yeah, basically we're gonna go ahead and just get a handle on all our video tracks within Premiere Pro. And to do that, we're gonna descend through that object hierarchy. Um, so again, this, this Pro Enhances website does actually quite depict that nice. You got your object, or you got your application at the top level, then you got your project, and then you got your sequence. Uh, this project item, uh, we'll get to that, uh, but that's not really in the, in the hierarchy. We're going application, project, sequence. So to get a hold of our video tracks, I'm gonna be going uh, app project. I want the active sequence. Um, and with the debugger, you'll actually see where these values that I'm just pulling out of thin air here are, are coming from. All right, so we're gonna go and create our little video tracks list, uh, which is gonna contain all of our video tracks. And then I'm gonna go and set our first track variable to the first value in our list, right -o. And I'm gonna go and put a little breakpoint right there. Right, so I just executed that code um, and it's reached our first breakpoint at the first track line, line three here. But more importantly, I wanna turn your attention to this debug console, and this debug little panel here on the left. And we're gonna look at our variables. And the most important one here is our video tracks, right? So this is the variable that we just assigned um, and we can see that it's got an attribute number of tracks and that's equaling six, right? So similarly, we can also see, we can also see the type of the video tracks uh, object and we see it's a track collection. Um, so you'll see this a lot, uh, the collection concept um, within the Premiere Pro API. So we've got a base track object, but as soon as you've got a lot of tracks, you've got a track collection. Um, similarly, we've got a lot of project items. So we'll learn a bit later that that's the clips, that sort of things, you know, within the, the project. But similarly, you'll have a collection of project items as well. Um, so the collections are basically just a group of, of sub objects. Okay. So a few interesting other ones to, to note here and just to, to touch base on how I'm getting to this app.project.active sequences. So if I take that app um, and I actually drop it down here, so again, this app is our global uh, application variable. And here we can see some interesting things here. Um, and really, I encourage you go and drill down. Like you need to go and play here and you need to ask the question, hey, what is this encoder variable attribute that I can access? Similarly, you know, what is uh, the app preferred path, et cetera, et cetera. And as you're looking at these, um, and here you can see our project, our active sequence, and within our active sequence, boom, there's our video tracks, right? So this is sort of the hierarchy, the uh, object hierarchy that I want to convey to you, this app going to project, going to video tracks. But here we're seeing a lot of amazing other things, right? So this active sequence here, I can actually pick out the, the audio display format here. Uh, similarly, we've got the audio tracks, obviously. Uh, the frame size, name markers, you know, how many markers are there. And again, because this marker is a collection, uh, we are actually able to iterate through all of those markers. So we can get a hold of all three markers that are there, go to them, see what their text is, see what their start uh, point is, see what their endpoints are, and start manipulating them. Right, so this debugger, super useful um, when finding bugs, but as well to augment your knowledge about this Premiere Pro API. Right, so we're in VS Code here, and I'm just gonna introduce you to a very simple bug that you might encounter uh, that the debugger can help you actually solve and get to the bottom of, right? So in our previous tutorials, uh, we use this uh, video, we, we got a grip on our video tracks by using the, uh, the following Come on, right? We said app dot project dot active sequence dot video tracks, and this is this enables us to get a grip of those those video tracks. However, if we don't have an active sequence, this code will error, right? So if I were to go and run this right now, I'm getting this error, and none of this is actually pointing us at all to say that you don't have an active sequence. Um, and unfortunately, that is usually the case with extend script, uh, a bit more so, uh, as the error messages haven't been curated that much to send you in the right direction, right? But we can use this debugger to, to see what is going on, right? So we're just gonna go and descend through this project hierarchy. Uh, 
and we're gonna start here at app. Uh, we're gonna go down to project, and we see, hey, lo and behold, there is our, our problem. Uh, we see we've got one sequence within our project, but there is no active sequence attribute, and that is where we're erroring out, all right? So if we were to uh, just drag in a little video here and actually get in a, a sequence, if I run this code now, no problems, uh, but let's actually just put in our little breakpoint there, uh, inspect our uh, project variable over here, active sequence, awesome. So there we go. So that's a bit of a, an example of how the, the debugger can help you fix that um, issue. Just for future, uh, if you're gonna run into this, usually an uh, easy way to just solve that is just use an if. Um, so you just literally say if app. Um, and in the background, that app, uh, well, let's not say app, let's actually say uh, app dot project dot active sequence. And if that active sequence doesn't exist, that if condition will actually fail. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead here and put a little else just so that we know um, what's going on here. And if I run this guy, I do have an active sequence. So obviously that is happening. However, when I close this active sequence, runs um, and actually gets, uh, can't write console.log in extend script. Remember, right line, running it again. Again, the nice thing there, debugger told me exactly what line things were going wrong. Cool, and now we're getting this no active sequence error. So one thing you take away from this video, you want to gracefully terminate your code. Um, you don't want loose ends that could bring your entire application to, to crash. And this little app without this if condition, that is definitely the case, right? So if we don't have an active sequence and we run any code that tries and access that active sequence attribute, we're gonna get errors, everything's gonna stop dead in this tract, and we can't continue. Whereas if we put a little if conditions in there, to just first check, hey, is there, is there an active sequence? You know, can we do work? Um, and if that passes, then only do we try what we want to do. Um, we start writing a lot more robust and stable code. Right, everyone, today we looked at VS Code Debugger and all of its amazing features, uh, like the breakpoints, as well as the variable inspector, and how you can use it to set breakpoints in your code, uh, to actually inspect what values your variables have within Adobe, giving you a, a magnifying glass into the whole system. And we also saw how it'll actually stop at the line where you've got an error, um, showing you all the values that you've currently got declared and making it possible for you to get to the root cause of your error. In the next video, we'll look at all of the different objects that Premiere Pro has, uh, defined in its API, like the app object, the project object, the sequence object, and we'll dive into each of the methods and attributes uh, that you'll commonly use with these objects and uh, some pitfalls that you can avoid when using them.